Okay, Sue. So. Okay, we're here today. It is March 18th, 2012, and we're here at New Hope Academy, and uh, we're interviewing some of the parents whose children have been reading upside down and backwards. They're going to share their experiences uh, with their children before they started reading upside down and backwards and after they started reading upside down and backwards. So we'll go around the table and introduce ourselves. Jim Vandale, uh, Isaiah's father. I'm Mara Vandale, Isaiah's mother. Uh, Bryce Thompson, Kira's father, and I'm also a teacher at New Hope Academy. Mary Florio, and I'm Jacob Small. James Florio, and I'm Jake Stead. And I'm Susan Rapp. And I have just have an opening <coughs> question for all of you, and then I'm going to leave it up to you to have a discussion. Okay. My question is, what were the experiences of your children before they started reading upside down and backwards? What were their experiences in school? Stumbling reading, getting stuck on words. When Isaiah came home and told us he could read upside down, we said, show us, go ahead. And he did, and we were surprised. He, was he did good. well, and he was proud of it. He was very um, intimidated because he couldn't read before, and so he felt like he was not that smart. I mm -hmm. feel conquering the upside down thing is helping him with the confidence. It did help. Mm -hmm. Now, did he have any services in school before that? Mm -hmm. I mean, just when he started struggling with reading, did he get any kind of help in any way from his teachers? Well, he was bringing more reading home to do, wasn't he? He would have to catch up on his reading at homework and stuff, and he was stumbling a little bit reading. This is his, um, actually, I've just been in New York Academy. So uh, Mrs. Fitzo is the one who um, said, well, we have this person to mm -hmm. give you name, and they, uh, she found that he has some weakness. So I see you agreed to have him um, do this. So anyway, saying that we agree, and then that's how we knew about it. Okay. So do you see an improvement in how? When he was reading upside down, absolutely. But now that he has changed a little bit, so I said he's going a little bit. So he, he's trying to flip it to what we call the conventional way yes. of sliding. So he's sliding. I think it's a confidence level. Yeah. He can read it upside down. He's more confident to read right mm -hmm. side up. So now I think he's reading better. Yeah. Understanding what he's reading, comprehending. He's doing, I think he's doing better. He's doing much better when he's I notice his spelling tests are always 100%. Yeah, that's, that's one of the <laughs> Every time. He's very proud of that. Yeah, one. yeah. Well. And, and his handwriting is completely inverted when he does it that way. Yeah. yeah. So. But yeah, I've noticed that he's uh, he's been... He can actually almost interchangeably now, you yeah. know, because he'll come into the room and say, "Can I do it right side up or upside down?" And I yeah. said, "I'd like for you to do it upside down in here," but he says, "Okay, yeah. no problem." I but I know he's been doing it the other way and getting a hundred in the other side. Yeah. Yeah. But he's faster on the upside down. He does. Mm -hmm. He must show up. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's that's fine if he wants to show up. If he yeah. has the confidence. That's that's great. But it helps him a lot. I just wish that um, I have a. Other children that went to public schools, and um, I don't feel that that at the school's grade level. And um, they did okay with, the, you know, elementary school and okay with intermediate, but once they went to high school, they kind of like fell. And we have nine kids together, and I don't think they were so successful with the high school. They were not ready for college. Okay. So I think a lot of these things should have been noticed. They should be earlier. Oh, it definitely helps. Programs like this should have been out there. Mm -hmm. Up to the parents' choice to choose. Mm -hmm. It's not up to the school, I guess. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Key. Um, for Kira, Kira is actually uh, reads at a 90 degree angle, uh, not completely inverted, um, um, which which kind of struck me as odd the first time I saw it because she's always been very bright and she's always sharp and she has has a higher vocabulary than at least I would expect from. A kindergarten or a first grader, um, but she never wanted to read. And when she and I would read together, it, it was a frustrating activity. It was not a fun father and daughter activity. Um, we would get flustered easily, and now she just does it on her own, and she she's reading at home. She still doesn't want me to read with her, but she wants me to watch her read. You know, so so that's an interesting thing. And and we we had Sunday school this morning in church. And I asked her to read, read a verse, and she just did it automatically without even thinking. And she read it, read it fine. She got stuck on oneself, but the, I, I have to look at that twice because one of you ever received one. Right, <laughs> right. But um, 
But she, when she realized that she could read at a 90 degree, 90 degree angle, that's all she wanted to do, except around her friends. Um, she wanted to be normal. Um, but, uh, but she would write letters to her family members, and she would write at a 90 degree angle. Writing, and she would tell them, I'm writing sideways. I bet you can't, or, or, or whatever. <laughs> and, uh, and she was just very proud of that fact. Um, showing it to my mom or her grandmother, and, and she takes pleasure in being able to read. And every time she goes and visits a relative, I, I, I'm on whatever chapter of whatever book she's reading. What grade are you in again? Oh, uh, what, what grade am I in, Dad? I don't know yet. How are you? <laughs> we have to think about it for a second. Um, so it, it's been a neat experience to, to see, and, and for me as a teacher, and having had Isaiah and, and, and another student seeing how they struggled and stuttered through simple, well, simple for, at their level, words that, shouldn't they know that? Mm -hmm. You know, all last year, and I didn't work with them every day, but I could see their struggle. And then after they started reading inverted, the struggle wasn't there anymore. And they were able to just move. And then once we came back this fall, we could see the struggle again because they were trying to yes. be normal again. Yeah. And but now that they've gone back to um, reading inverted, that they're flying again and they're and they're rebuilding. And it's almost it's almost like a walking stairs. You know, yeah, sure they can read. You know, you were saying Isaiah can read. Can, can can I read upside down or can I read right side up? Well, it's, it's almost. The, the inverted reading is his staircase. Without his staircase, he can't go any higher. You know, sure, he can read the right, the right way, conventional way, but without the staircase underneath him, it, he can only, he needs to have that underneath him. Um, and, and I can see that with, with the other student and, and, and with Kira as well. Now, let me ask you about the other children in the school, everybody. Um, in the beginning, what was their perception of the children holding the books upside down backwards? Their classmates. Initially, it was, oh, well, that's cool. Uh, you know, uh, almost akin to bringing in a new toy. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, oh or, or somebody drawing a really cool picture. Oh, what are you doing? Um, well, that's cool. And let me see if I can do it. Um, Could they do it? I mean, when they when they tried to do it, could they do it? Some of the older students could, who had you know, I guess mastered the the reading and the vocabulary, could figure it out. Um, and, and, and I can remember working with with the students at last year in reading class. They would be reading their books, and I try to follow along. And, and I'm trying to read them very. I'm, I'm going cross-eyed trying to do it. <laughs> uh, so. But 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 if they but if they if they're reading inverted, I'm reading <laughs> I'm reading conventionally, so I can see it just fine. Uh, but 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 I do think that with anything new or different, there 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 will, there will always be a, uh, a a social dynamic there that excludes you a little bit, um, even if even if there's nothing wrong. Um, for, for me, I, I had hearing aids all of my school career, um, and, and there was, e even though there, there was nothing else ab about me that was different, there was something that was different, and because there was a difference, that made just, just a subtle change in dynamic, which, which affected um, me socially. And so I, I can see that happening with, with the inverted readers and, and, and with Kira. Um, but, but it's it, it's subtle, and so maybe that affects the confidence. Where I don't want to be different. I want to be just like everybody else. You know, I don't want to be. I don't want people. Right. Look, look, they're reading upside down, or or that they're doing it different. You know, it, it's almost it's almost like, well, that that person doesn't know their tennis timetables yet. Kind of right. attitude about it, e even though they they don't think there's anything wrong. It's just that it's different. Um, so, so that that could affect the confidence level with it, and the and the desire to carry that through into into a generalized environment. Um, but overall, the, the perception.
perception of it is it's kind of neat. And now that they're, they've gotten used to it, it it's, it, it's, it's it is normal now. Well, it's it is normal. So I think it helps them now that there's four of them. Yeah, right. now they're almost not a majority, but it is yeah. a substantial <laughs> portion of that class. Group. Yeah. We have so, to go yeah. I think the small school system versus the school of 600 or 800 right. students. Right. You beat your main so many. It's a very, very nurturing, it's a very nurturing, absolutely. Very nurturing, very welcoming and nurturing environment. Mm -hmm. So, so mm -hmm. it works. Yeah. So yeah. Very and the sad, the sad thing was is that um, I saw some of those kids, they would rather fail mm -hmm. and not read at all right. and be like the other kids. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that, that is scary. And that's scary because, yeah. as you said, they're so young. Yeah. You know, they Yeah, the so confidence young. is the main thing you have to mm -hmm. keep going. Mm -hmm. Build the confidence, then it right. gives them the courage to do it. Right. 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 Not right. be afraid to make a mistake right. with their confidence. I have, a, we have an 18 year old that has been graduating every year from Killy High School. <laughs> And I know his problem is to bring him. Yeah. And I had every meeting to be called since five or four meetings when I used to go. Um, well, it's nothing wrong with him. I think he's just the one to do his job. Mm -hmm. And I knew there's something wrong. And I try to drag him to the school, but now he's 18 and he, you know, it's kind of like he's got to right. arrest him right here. So it should have started at It should have started age. early at, I'd say, his age, to say mm -hmm. younger, so he could have more confidence. He's going to be 19 in July, and he still has another year and a half. To graduate, it's just very sad. Mm -hmm. So they get in trouble, but he's persevering and yeah. he's still there. I, I, and, he's he's going, and he's going, for, well, so he's you're, not, yeah. yeah, he's not ready. He's not ready. He's not ready when he graduates. His child no left behind is really, he's really he's dropping the ball at this time. He's yeah. being left behind. Mm -hmm. right. And part of that is because they want all of the children to fit into the same mold. Right. You know, the no yeah. child left behind wants, wants everyone to fit into the same mold. Yeah. And we're all unique individuals that have to be respected. Sure. So now, Jacob, now, Mary and Jim, share your story. <laughs> um, Jacob um, really started struggling when he hit first grade, which was kind of a blind side to us. Um, Jacob was always the kid that, when, you know, when he was younger, he had an amazing vocabulary. He used to come up to me as a five-year-old and ask me, Mommy, do you need hydration? <laughs> Are you, do you want me to go get some water for you? Do you need hydration? And he understood what the words meant. But we got to first grade and reading, and he just collapsed. He completely collapsed. And we couldn't understand what was happening. And um, went through a lot of different doctors and a lot of different um, things. We were going through the public school system. And, you know, as a now he's a fourth grader and he's still two years behind in reading and struggling at those two years behind reading. Just, you know, um, we were having lots of discussions with the school of, you know, what do we do and how do we move him along and, um, 